Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So the process of ATP synthesis from ADP and phosphate is called phosphorylation. When phosphorylation occurs in presence of sunlight, it is called photophosphorylation. First, let's talk about non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So, this is the picture representing Z scheme of photosynthesis. Here, we can see two photosystems, PS1 and PS2, are located in thylakoid membrane of plant chloroplast. PS2 first absorbs sunlight of 680 nanometer wavelength and gets excited and loses two electrons which are accepted by primary electron acceptor pheophytin. Pheophytin releases them and Plastoquinone accepts them. Again, plastoquinone releases them and cytochrome B6F accepts them. Cytochrome B6F releases them and plastocyanin accepts them. Now, when these two electrons come through cytochrome they release extra energy which is used to generate ATP from ADP and phosphate and here an electron deficiency occurs in these two chlorophyll A molecules. To replenish that deficiency water molecule is broken down to yield electrons protons and oxygen. These two electrons enter PS2 and makes chlorophyll A molecules electron rich. Similarly, PS1 absorbs sunlight of 700 nanometer wavelength and gets excited and loses two electrons which are first received by the primary electron acceptor A0. A0 molecule releases the pair of electrons which is received by pheridoxin. Pheridoxin releases them which along with NADP plus and H plus molecules generate NADPH in stroma. This reaction is catalyzed by a specific enzyme NADP plus reductase. When two electrons are lost by these chlorophyll A molecules, it creates a deficiency. This electron deficiency is fulfilled by two electrons which are supplied by plastocyanin. This process is known as non-cyclic photophosphorylation because the lost electrons of PS2 are received by PS1 and are not reverted to PS2. Here, the complete movement of the electrons is in a unidirectional or in a non-cyclic manner like this. Now, let's talk about cyclic photophosphorylation. We know that Z scheme of photosynthesis as well as non-cyclic photophosphorylation occur in the thylakoid membrane of chloroplast. But when it occurs in stroma lamellae, the process gets modified. In stroma lamellae, PS2 is absent. It also lacks NADP plus reductase enzyme. So when only PS1 is functional, it absorbs sunlight of 
700 nanometer wavelength and gets excited and releases two electrons. These two electrons are accepted by the primary electron acceptor A0. This A0 then releases this electron pair which is accepted by feridoxine. Now feridoxine loses them which are not accepted by NADP plus rather comes to plastoquinone. This electron pair releases the extra energy which is used to generate ATP from ADP and phosphate at this stage. Plastoquinone releases those two electrons which are accepted by cytochrome B6F. Cytochrome B6F releases them and plastocyanine accepts them. Again, here this electron pair releases the extra energy which is used to generate ATP from ADP and phosphate. Plastocyanin releases this electron pair which is again accepted by PS1. Here the electron is circulated within the photosystem 1 or PS1 and the phosphorylation occurs due to the cyclic flow of electrons. Hence it is called cyclic photophosphorylation. Hence cyclic photophosphorylation results in the synthesis of 2 ATP but no NADPH. Whereas non-cyclic photophosphorylation results in the synthesis of 1 ATP and also NADPH. Sometimes cyclic photophosphorylation occurs in thylakoid membrane also. PS2 can only absorb 680 nanometer light. When it is not available and only light of wavelengths beyond 680 nanometer are available, cyclic photophosphorylation occurs.